Good morning. We welcome you to worship across many different platforms. If you are worshiping from home, there are two ways to participate in worship this morning. Assuming the weather is nice come Sunday morning, you can watch a live stream of our outdoor worship service on our church Facebook page. And if you prefer to watch pre-recorded worship, then you could watch on our church YouTube page. Both services follow the same liturgy, the same bulletin, the same scripture and sermon, and so the choice is yours. If you find that your internet connection is low or your picture jumpy, your best bet might be with the YouTube channel. There are several announcements for our church family and they run on slides at the end of this worship video. Um, and so I draw your attention to them, but a few to highlight for you in this time. The first is to say that last Sunday we had a congregational meeting on Zoom and we elected a pastor nominating committee. Thanks be to God for the gift of these 10 people who have said yes to the call to serve on this search committee. Um, we are so grateful for their willingness to serve and we are so excited to see where God is leading our beloved congregation. Another announcement is that Book Club will meet again next month on Zoom. We're reading Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. It is a very good book, which I just finished this week. As God gathers us into this space, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship the risen Lord. And may we leave this time of worship united, together, encouraged, and nourished. Amen. Please join with me in our call to worship. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. As a family formed by faith, we gather to worship the living Lord. Lifelong followers seeking sustenance, new disciples searching for grace. A family formed by faith, we gather to kneel before the giver of mercy. Children of God, come. The Lord gathers us in and calls us his own. Let us praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the second Helvetic Confession tells us that when we sin, we have an advocate with God, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. Together, let us confess our sins. Holy One, there is much we must confess. When we discount another's pain or overlook neighbors in distress, forgive us. When we choose callous words over compassionate impulses, forgive us. When we think others less deserving of grace and rash and kindness as if it could be exhausted, forgive us. Have mercy upon us, Lord, and heal our brokenness so that every word and deed that proceeds from our hearts might glorify you. Amen. This is true repentance, sincerely turning toward God and all that is good and away from the devil and all that is evil. Trusting in the good news, we know that we are loved and forgiven by Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. Alleluia. Amen.
friends, the needle point behind me is the Hebrew word shalom. It's used to say both hello and goodbye, and it means peace. Not just a simple peace, but a very holistic peace. Completeness and goodness, prosperity and harmony, welfare and tranquility. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Shalom. Let us listen to the word of God from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 11, verses 1 and 2a, and verses 29 through 32. Listen to the word of God. I ask, then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they now have been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. With a voice of singing, declare ye this and let it be heard. Alleluia. Declare ye this and let it be heard. Declare ye this. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. 
We have sat with Paul's letter to the Romans for six weeks now, digging through it looking for our good news for tough times. The theme of Romans from beginning to end is simple and true. God is faithful. Paul writes of God's faithfulness with a particular context in mind. Throughout the letter to the Romans, Paul struggles to understand why his fellow Jews have failed to turn to Christ as he has. Reverend Mary Beth Anton writes, In Jesus, Paul has found redemption and reconciliation with his Creator. Why not they? If they have not followed Christ, what is to become of the chosen people? Will God reject God's own? In chapter 11, Paul concludes that it is impossible for God to reject God's own beloved, those whom God has created and called, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. God did not let go of Paul. God did not let the Gentiles go, and neither will God let God's chosen people go. The theme, God is faithful. Paul has many variations on the theme throughout Romans. From Romans chapter 8, there is nothing, no amount of brokenness that can ever separate us from the love of God made known in Jesus Christ because God is faithful. And then from Romans 9, God hears and honors every feeling and emotion of our life, every high and low, every joy and concern. God makes room for all of it and walks through all of it with us because God is faithful. And from Romans 10, God's grace restores, repairs, and makes new because God is faithful. And now from Romans chapter 11, even in the face of our persistent disobedience, God's way is mercy because God is faithful. The gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. God does not let go of you, of me, or of us. And that's amazing. And it's also not the totality of what Paul is proclaiming in Romans 11. Paul, as I said, writes to a particular context. The people to whom he writes would honestly be fine if God rejected God's own people. They did not like them historically or currently. There is no goodwill between them, and so as far as these new believers in Rome were concerned, if God forgot about the Israelites, if God let go of God's chosen people, and God's favor fell solely on them, these new Gentile believers, that would be totally fine. So yes, God doesn't give up on you or me or us. And also, God doesn't give up on him or her or them. And God doesn't give up on the enemy, the stranger, or the other. It's like the parable of the prodigal son, which Jesus tells in Luke 15. The father waits, looking down the road, looking for any sign of his lost son. We do not know how long he waits. We only know that he that he faithfully watches for as long as it takes. And when his son does return, the father embraces him. He runs to him rejoicing. And then he celebrates with the biggest celebration he can whip up. And the older brother, who has been there all along, obedient, is angry and upset. He refuses to attend the celebration. He is not able to understand the love that will not let the younger son go. Or that that same love also embraces him. In the words, again, of Reverend Mary Beth Anton, quote, This love is unconditional, not based upon our obedience, our faith, or our love. God offers this love freely, now and always. Are our hearts open to that kind of love, the kind of love that extends to people we are most set on keeping our love from? The kind of love that offers gifts and a calling that cannot be denied to anyone or by anyone. That kind of love must always remain a mystery to us. It's beyond our capacity because we are a broken people just as the ways of God are a mystery to us. So much remains beyond our comprehension. The hows and the whys of God are largely beyond our knowing, beyond the limits of our humanity. Even after six weeks of studying Romans, much of what Paul writes remains a mystery to me. I think maybe even much of what Paul writes remains a mystery to him. 
I appreciate that Paul argues and circles and ultimately can't say for sure why or how things are the way they are. But he keeps concluding what he knows from his own experience that no matter, God does not let go. As the Reverend Jackie Lewis says it, though the ways of God are mysterious, and though the arc of human history bends in many ways that seem to deny and defy God's goodness, God's purpose is mercy, and God's method is grace. God is faithful, faithful to us, faithful to them, faithful to all. And that's the good news for tough times. And then, of course, the follow-up question is, how will we respond to God's faithfulness? If the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable, if there's nothing we can do to deny the gift and the calling of Jesus Christ, if there's no sin too great, no disobedience too far gone, how will we respond? That's the question our lives get to answer, day in and day out. The knowledge of God's faithfulness ought to, if our hearts are open and in the right place, move us to join in God's work. If God shows up in the midst of our brokenness, then we ought show up in the midst of the broken places of the world. If God tends to and heals our brokenness, then we ought join in the work of tending to and healing the brokenness within ourselves, our communities, our world. We've been given the gifts and the calling to participate in God's mission of restoration and healing. The only question is, will we? May it be so. During our worship services, we are always called to share the gifts that God has given us with God's church and God's children so that everyone can benefit from his blessings. Whether you choose to share those blessings and those tithes through a check mailed to the church office or online through Realm or the church website, everything that you share with the church will be shared with those in need. Let us pray. Oh God, we gather to thank you. Your church is special to us. Within it are peoples with so many different gifts. Thank you, God, for providing us with this place of belonging. In response to your generosity, we bring our own gifts to use in your church. Out of gratitude, we give, for you have given us so much. Amen.
Let us join our hearts together in prayer. This morning's prayers of the people come from the publication of the Presbyterian Outlook. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, so many of your people are hurting. There seems to be no end in sight to the uncertainty and the pain of this season. Parents and caregivers are worried about children's well-being as the school year approaches and the pandemic persists. Those living in group care facilities yearn to be able to have visitors again, and the loneliness of those already isolated grows. The economic fallout from this virus gets deeper and wider as many scramble to find work and put food on the table. It feels at times as if we call out to you and you do not respond. We shout out for mercy, but we receive no help. Yet, just like the Canaanite woman kept calling out to you, kept following you, refused to be turned away until you healed her daughter, so too we call out to you now. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Hear our cries, help us. We call out for mercy for those on the front lines of fighting for justice. We call out for mercy for those on the front lines of fighting this pandemic. We call out for mercy for those grieving the death of a loved one. We call out for mercy for the sick and those who tend them. We call out for mercy for the scared and those who comfort them. We call out for mercy for those without food or housing, medical care or community. We call out for mercy on behalf of those who do not have the strength to raise their own voices. We call out for mercy for ourselves trusting you know our deepest needs, even if we do not have the wisdom to name them. Hear us, Lord. Heal us, Lord. Help us, Lord. When we fear you have walked away from us in our desperation, send your Holy Spirit to remind us yet again that God does not reject God's people, that the call and gifts of God are irrevocable, Embed in us the biblical stories that teach us that even that which we intend for evil, you, Lord God, use for good. Grant us the faith of the Canaanite woman so that we will persist in advocating for the vulnerable and the hurting no matter how long it takes for our world to be made well. Give us faith, Almighty God to keep focused on our Savior, following the way, loving you and our neighbors until the one we worship comes again, and come again he will. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people, love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may God bless you and keep you. May God cause the divine light to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God turn towards you and grant you peace. This day and always. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs>